Okay, so this video is going to look at one type of excellence. There's a different type of excellence question that we'll do in a second video. I'm actually going to go from the one that I posted up last night because I'd left my pen at work, so therefore I couldn't actually write very clearly. So I decided that I would remake this and talk about it today. So uh, I guess from my point of view, this is the easiest type of excellence that you could ever get. And it looks really tricky. I mean, I'm assuming you've done the rest of the linear programming units, and therefore you've drawn the graph, you've written, oh, sorry, you've written in equations, you've drawn the graph, you've shaded it, you've found the optimal point, or you found the points on the feasible region, and then you've used that in a objective function to find the maximum or minimum, whatever the question's about. This one is saying, having done all that, what happens if we change the values for our objective function? And really, this is all about income, so I'm going to make it equal to i. The bit that's important is they're saying rather than it being one value stays the same and the other one changes, like the second type of excellence, or what would you have to increase this one by to work out that, that this was still the optimal solution or whatever, or how would you have to move it to make there's multiple solutions? This one is really, really easy. It's saying, imagine I have a price P. and the price is in the ratio of two to three, what would be the new maximum income? And therefore, all you do with your new income equation is write two price lots of your x plus three lots of the price of your y, because that keeps them in the ratio. So your 2p and your 3p are keeping your ratio, and your x and y is just giving you the value. And then all you do, and as I say, this is where it gets really quite silly, is you pick your vertexes and you're going to find your income in terms of P. So therefore you're going to know that one of them's going to be 200 times more than P and another one's going to be 50 times more than P. And therefore it doesn't matter what you make P, you can identify which one's going to be the biggest because it's the one that's got the largest number of P. So if I go through these, uh, if I put in 25, plus three lots of 67.5, that gives me that in this one, so let me actually write out the calculation I did. So EG, uh, I equals two lots of 25p plus three lots of 67.5p, which gives me that that value is 252.5p. So therefore this is 252.5p. Now again, I don't care about the fact there's a decimal in this because this is my objective function. Uh, so that's okay. So this one, if I substitute in 85 and 15, I get 215 lots of P. And this is the one that I think is going to give me the maximum. That gives me 260 lots of P, and I know this one's not going to give me the maximum, but for completeness I will work it out, that gives me 90, oops, uh, let me undo that, take out part of my P as well, so that gives me 95 P, so my maximum is still when I'm at 4060, and I'd have to put that into context because I get 260 lots of P. Okay, that's the video done.